all right guys welcome back to another set so here we'll be going through the next set of questions from number seven all the way hopefully to number 11 but anyways let's jump in so the table shows the volumes in kilometers cubed of four oceans okay so we've got the arctic ocean the atlantic indian and southern oceans and all the results are given in standard form okay now a write 7.18 times 10 to the power 7 as an ordinary number so just like a regular number now this is easy when it comes to standard form you just look at the power when it says power 7 it means it's going to be seven digits after this first number the 7 so we're looking at something like this so 7 and then we copy the 18 so that's already two digits meaning we've got five more digits so five more zeros okay so to summarize you just need to put seven digits after the very first digit okay now to write this neatly just put the commas in the right place you're gonna have a comma here and a comma there so it's gonna read 71 million eight hundred thousand yep eight hundred thousand <laughs> and that's it oh yeah kilom kilometers cubed okay b so calculate the total volume of these four oceans now this is just calculate work you literally want to sum all of these up so to do it carefully write this out then write plus this value plus that value and then plus this value and then when you put this on the calculator and i've already gone ahead and done it you should get this answer so you should get six six four six and what's that five more zeros so that number is hold on so you've got comma there comma there so this is six hundred and sixty four million six hundred thousand kilometers cubed okay now in this kind of question it doesn't specify to write as an ordinary number or standard form so you could write this answer or if you want to put in standard form again to put standard form you take the first digit point and copy out any other number so six four six don't copy out the zeros then write times 10 to the power of, and then you count how many digits are after the first number so you've got two here you've got three here and you've got another three so you've got three six you've got eight digits and that can go here or this can go here so again you have two options to answer your question so anyway for this kind of question if it doesn't specify just write whatever the calculator says and avoid the any risk or calculation mistakes yeah okay next one so the volume of the South China Sea is, uh, what's that, 9,880,000 kilometers cubed. Write this in standard form. Okay, so we put this on the top. So you copy the first digit, so it'll be 9 point, and then we've got 2888 times 10 to the power of, then we count the digits. So we've got 3, 6, so 6 numbers after the 9. And that's it, that goes here. Okay guys, number 8. So the diagram shows an isosceles triangle. Okay, very important word here, isosceles. Isosceles means that two lengths or angles are the same. Well, both will be the same. In this case, because we're told that we've got two x centimeters length, which are of course the same, these are of course the same. And that if that's the case, if they told you to, you know, split the triangle in half, you can. Because then you're gonna have an identical vertical on both sides, yeah? And this means you get a right angle triangle. So this is just little properties of isosceles, yeah? Now let's look at the question. So now it tells us that the area of the triangle is 12 centimeters squared. Okay, keep this in mind. Area is 12. Work out the perimeter. Okay, not too bad. So first things first. The reason why they give you this first sentence is because they want you to figure out the, the lengths associated to get area 12. Now to get an area of 12 from a triangle, we know that the area of a triangle is always base times the height and then you half it now we have the base the base is five we do not have the height and remember the x's are not the height they're they're the they're slanted we're talking about a vertical height like we cross through the middle so we can call this vertical height that we just did h so we can say now with the information we got we can say that the area which is 12 time equals the base which is five times the height over two yet will give us 12 now with this information we can rearrange this equation to find h so what we could do is firstly multiply 2 across so you can get 24 equals 5 times h which is 5h and then divide it by 5 and doing so 24 divided by 5 is going to give us 4.8 so the height is 4.8 now you guys can always update this over here so you can write 4.8 here and now 
in order to find these x values, now because we now because you can see that this is a right angle triangle, we can use Pythagoras. So let's update it down here, yeah. So we can just take one right angle triangle. We've got x here, we've got 4.8 here. Now notice how this is five centimeters across. Because it's bang in the middle, we just want half of it. So we want 2.5 to the right. Okay, so 2.5 here. Now using Pythagoras' theorem, Pythagoras tells us that we have um, a squared plus b squared must give us the hypotenuse squared. Now the hypotenuse is x and a and b are these other two lengths. So plugging them in, we're going to have 4.8 squared plus 2.5 squared must give us the hypotenuse squared. Now guys, literally smash this in your calculator. 4.8 squared plus 2.5 squared. Have a go and let's see what we get. Okay. So when I did it, I got an answer like 29.29. And because it equals x squared, I want you to square root your answer. And that will give us our x value, yeah? So square root your answer. You should get about 5.412 dot dot dot. Okay? We're not going to round this yet because we're going to do, we're only going to fully round it at the end, yeah? Now, the question wants us to find the perimeter. So now we've got the x values. It's about 5.412. Okay, so now what we do is literally add up the lengths around it. So plusing this in your calculator. So since you already got answer in your calculator 5.412, just double times the answer by two, and then plus an extra five, and you should get an answer to three significant figures, about fifteen point eight centimeters. And that's it, guys. This question is done. Okay, number nine. So the table shows information about the speeds of 60 cycles, okay? So if you guys are not familiar with this kind of data set, this tells us that, for example, for about three cycles or three cyclists or people, they went at about 0 to 10 kilometers per hour. But if you look at somewhere the bomb, about two cycles went at the top speed, which was 50 to 60 kilometers per hour. Nobody went higher and nobody that was recorded at least went less can't go less anyway now next bit complete the cumulative frequency table notice how all the speeds now instead of going from 0 to 10 10 to 20 they, they've gone from 0 to 10 now 0 to 20 what this means is that they've accumulated they've added them up as they went along so we just have to add these values as we go along so we can say for the first one 0 to 10 is of course the same there was a cumulative frequency of 3 um, the next one, 0 to 20, they added the first two sets, so it's 3 plus 16 is 19, and so on. Next one, they added the, the, these three, so you can just add up, so you can add 19 to 24. So again, always put this in your calculator if you're unsure, and you should get 43, and keep going, yeah? So adding 10, 53, adding 5 and adding 2, so adding 5 is 58, and adding 2 is 60. And this makes sense, because... We know that there were 60 cycles. If you're including everybody, then you must have got up to 60 by the end of it. So this is this should be correct. Now, next part. Now, on the grid, draw a cumulative frequency graph for your table. So they want us to literally smash this table onto this plot over here. Now, notice how you got speed at the bottom. So this is the cumulative frequency. So we're going to go from up to zero. So up to zero, there was no one up to zero. But up to the speed of 10, we had three people. So at 10 kilometers per hour, we had three people. So that goes about here. Up to 20 kilometers per hour, we had 19 and so on. So I'm going to do this very fast. And then we keep on doing this until we get to the end. So 30, which is 43, 60. Okay, now guys, now we're done, and of course, start at zero, yeah? So now all we have to do is literally connect the shape, yeah? So it's gonna be a curve. So be very careful how you plot this. So it'll be something like... Okay, so by the way, my measurements here might not be the same in the, in the, in the mark scheme, yeah? Because cause you're gonna be more accurate than I am. <laughs> That's one thing. Maybe it's better if I go backwards. Now this is the tricky... Oof, all right. Doesn't look too bad actually. So it should look a bit like that, yeah? Okay, not bad. Now let's do the last bit. 
So use your graph to find an estimate for the interquartile range. Now interquartile range means the difference between the first quarter and the third quarter. The first quarter means that if you've got 60 people, the first quarter represents one quarter of 60. So one quarter of 60 is 15. So we're looking at the 15th person. So somewhere along the line. So it must hit like maybe somewhere here. So you're going down, oops, you're going down to about 18. I mean, again, this is so badly off. Next one, the third quarter, so three quarters of 60 is 45. If you're not sure how to calculate that, three quarters times 60 in your calculator will give us 45. So that's it, that's the interquartile range. It's the, it's the difference between the quartiles. So I think that's about here and it, about this first line. So it's this line down, so I'm gonna put my mouse there, bring it down, it's about 31. I think it's like that. Yeah, it looks about right, doesn't it? 31. So the difference is between 18 and 31. So 31 minus 18 is 13 kilometers per hour. That's it, guys. That's literally all you have to do. All right, number 10. So here is triangle ABD. So ABCD. The point C lies on BD. So over here, we've got a couple lengths and some angles. So this tells us that angle ADB is a right angle. So we're dealing with a right angle triangle. And angle CAD, which is this little gap, is 20. So they want us to find the angle of BAC, which is the whole thing over here. 20 plus this unknown. Now, the way to do this is that we need to observe this as two different right angle triangles. Yeah? The, the obvious one is from A to C to D, the small one. So we can just do a little sketch over here. So we've got a triangle that looks a bit like this. And we know the angle is 20. It's right angled, it's 13, and we can, of course, work out some unknown length here. Reason why we find this length is because the aim is, if you find this little length here, then we can construct another big right angle triangle with a total length. And then we can find the total big angle here. Because we've got 13, we want a length here, we can work out the whole thing. Okay? Now, in order to do this, we need to use trigonometry or so ka toa now the way this works, all you have to do is literally just ask yourself what angle, what lengths do we have? So if this is the angle of interest, opposite the angle which is here is the opposite, so is the O, and this angle in the length next to the angle is the adjacent. Of course, it's diagonal as a hypotenuse. So because we got the O and A that we're working with, we're looking at Toa because Toa has O and A. Now T stands for tan, so this means. We're going to have tan of the angle, the angle is 20, and it's going to equal the opposite, which is x, over the adjacent, which is 13. And now all you want to do is rearrange the solve for x. So to rearrange, you've got 13 at the bottom, you've got to clear the fraction, so multiply 13 across. So you're going to have 13 times tan 20 equals x. Now smash this in the calculator. So 13 tan 20. And you should get do 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 four point seven oops four point seven oh wow it looks so bad four point seven three yeah uh, x equals four point seven three okay so you could make it as long as you want don't round it yet round it in the end yeah okay round round don't round it to one dp now since you got this little length here we can now construct like the full right angle triangle. So let's do it at the bottom, yeah? So we're gonna have a big right angle triangle like this. We've got a length of 13. Let's say we don't know the whole total angle. Let's call it Y now. And we can say that the total length from the top to the bottom is gonna be eight plus what you just found, 4.73, which is 12.73, okay? Now, to work this out, again, we can look at this shape. We've got an opposite, which is O, we got an adjacent which is A, so we're going to use TOA. Same idea. So we're going to have tan of the angle, so it'll be tan of Y is going to equal opposite 12.73 over adjacent 13. Now the difference is that we want to find the angle. And the thing is we have a tan next to the angle. So to separate the tan, to completely remove it, you got use the inverse tan bond. So in your calculator you have the tan negative 1 bond. Pressing this button, so you have to press shift and tan, you'll get this, then you're gonna you're gonna write 12.73 over 13. So you're gonna tan inverse the right hand side. 
So have a go do this and see what you guys get. So tan inverse, oops, shift tan. So you're gonna get 12.73 over 13, and you should get an angle of. Da, da, da. So what is it to one decimal place here? Yeah? Okay, oh that's not done yet. So that's the total angle. You're gonna get that total angle of 44.4 degrees. Okay, so remember that's y. So what y meant? Y meant the whole thing across. Yeah, that was y. Now because you know part of it is 20, so the remainder is going to be when you subtract 20. So the remainder is going to be 24.4 degrees. And this is the angle over here. We can call that Z, yeah? So Z equals 24.24. And that's it guys, that's literally this question done. So express this fraction as a single fraction in the simplest term. Okay, so this is all about subtracting fractions. Now, when you add or subtract fractions, the first thing that should always come in your mind is that we need to have common denominators, yeah? So one has a 3 and the other one has a 2x. Now, for them to be common, we need to multiply firstly the entire left-hand side by what it, what it doesn't have, which is 2x, and multiply up and down on the right side by what it doesn't have, which is a 3. So let's have a go at that. So multiplying the left-hand side up and down by 2x, you're going to get a 10x over 6x okay minus and on the right hand side if you multiply up and down by 3 so 3 times x plus 2 is going to give us 3x plus 6 and then 2x times 3 is of course 6x so here we go we got common denominators now now it gets easy now all you have to do of course just to be safe put a bracket around here because yeah? when you subtract you're subtracting all of it so we're going to have now all over 6x 10x minus 3x plus 6 okay so the way you should do this is firstly open a bracket so you can get 10x minus 3x minus 6 over 6x now 10x take away 3x is 7x minus 6 over 6x and i think that's it i don't think you can do any more to this can you mm, nope that's it i think this is the fully simplified answer but if you guys have a different answer, let me know, yeah? But I think this is it. But anyway, guys, I hope this video helped, and I shall see you guys next time. Ciao.